All right, this is lesson eight four. Well, really, it's lesson eight six, eight seven bond energy. But now eight four and eight five, we're not really doing those. But I'm going to say a little bit about bond length, size of atoms in bonds. I'm going to mention a little bit about that in this lesson. So there's a little bit of eight four. You might kind of read a little bit of eight four up. But also, we're going to get eight four. The material in eight four. Sorry, I'm I'm going to the printer to get something. The the um the in eight four the material that I go that we go over we're also going to go over in the next chapter that we do after this one it'll come back so but there's a little bit I want to touch on in fact I'll just do that first so in in um in eight four it just talks about oh I didn't even print it um let me see on the notes here. Size of atoms and ions and different different sizes of different atoms. Well, all I really care about is for now. You could read that if you wanted. There's a section called the um, the Born Haber cycle. It's something that used to be required on AP, and they they don't require it anymore. But the it is good to know what an equation looks like for an ionization of an atom or for an electron affinity of an atom. Um, but you're not going to, electron affinity, you're not even going to really hear that at all. So here, here we go. Um, I'll just mention this one thing about 8-4 or about bond. I'll just say, well, it's sort of 8-4 in a way. But sizes of bonds and atoms in bonds. Okay, what in the world do I mean by that? Because you're going to see this on some, on some worksheet, on the worksheet later on. It's kind of like getting near the end of the chapter. This is, I know I do my I do my lessons in a different order, but this is one of the last things I should teach uh, because it's actually a fairly easy thing, the math we'll be doing. But um, let's just say you have a carbon, I've already mentioned this in one video, but let's just say you have a carbon to carbon single bond or carbon to carbon, well, I'll put here, double bond, okay? Or a carbon to carbon triple bond. Now, I can exaggerate it even better than this. I think I've told you before. These, um, these bonds have different lengths. And so you should know that a single bond is always longer than a double bond. And a triple bond is the shortest. So shortest and the longest. That's the longest bond and the shortest bond. You should also know that the bond order, that bond order would equal one, the bond order is two, and the bond order is three. You have one, two, or three bonds. Now, if you had an atom that had, um, well, like this, let's just put some oxygens right here, um, and let's just say there's a double bond here. Well. There's nothing special about this about this bond that would say that, that the double bond has to be there and it can't be there. That's called resonance. We talked about that before. So let's just say, and of course, if I did it, I'd have to put a lone pair. And this, this molecule is not complete. It will keep on going. Maybe it goes to another carbon or something. But, but for these bonds right here, for these two bonds, what would the bond order be? Well, this would be shared back and forth. It would kind of go, so the resonance is you can have a double and a single, or you can have a double there and a single, a double and a single, or a single and a double. No matter what, they keep switching. Well, the point is, I didn't think about this telling you in the other video, but it's a simple way. This, this is a say it's a carbon. It goes onto a chain and keeps going. So this one will not have resonance. Only between the oxygens will it have resonance. So what is the bond order for these, these two bonds right here? Well, these two bonds, because of resonance, will be one and a half bonds. So you have one, count the total number of bonds. One, two, a double, and three. In the resonance structure, there's three, okay? One, two, three. Or even if you drew it this way, it's still three. One, two, three. And divide it by how many atoms, how many how many bonds you're looking at? A bond here and a bond there. Uh, well, how many are there? Two areas with three bonds. Three bonds and then two, two places. So three divided by two is 1.5. So that will be a 1.5 bond order for that one. Well, I'll just put it over here. 1.5 bond order will be that, okay? 
And if you have like a carbonate, you know, a double bond, and you spread it around three of them, then you have one, two, three, four divided by by three. <laughs> four divided by three is like a one and one third. Or if you wanted to figure it out mathematically, was it four point? No, one point three 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 bond order. One point three three three. Well, anyway, okay, so let's talk about that. Let me just mention, so a 1.333 bond order would be longer, or it would be shorter than a 1.5 bond order. Okay, well, anyway, just a little bit to think about. One more thing I wanted to add is this. Um, okay, let's say that you have a carbon atom bonded to, okay, oxygen, and you have another carbon atom bonded to, um, let me get the chart out. Where is that chart? Oh, no, I'm going to mess it. Okay. So we can bond it to oxygen or we'll just say selenium. I'll pick something else. A carbon bonded to selenium. So sometimes they've asked in the AP, which bond will be longer? All right. Well, both of them, let's just say they're both single bonds. You might think, well, even if they were both double bonds, it doesn't really matter if, if it's that's consistent. So they have, they have to be the same. I mean, if one was a double and one's a single, then yeah, the single is longer and the double is shorter. But between these, what will be longer? All right, what you want to do is you want to think about who is actually bonding. I mean, what, I'm sorry, who? What orbitals are actually bonding? In the carbon atom, the valence is at N equals 2. Ah, so we kind of come back, kind of combining two things. So the bond really occurs between the N equals 2 of carbon, and for oxygen, it's also the N equals 2, and the N equals 2 of oxygen. But now, okay, so on this atom, it's still the N equals 2, but what about for selenium? Selenium is at N equals 1, 2, 3, N equals 4. So that tells you you've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So look at this for a moment, and you'll see. Now, the bond length, technically, we measure the bond length as the center of an atom to the, to the, the center of one atom to the center of the other atom. That will be the bond length, the center of one atom and the center of the other atom. Oh, my picture didn't do a very good job here at all of showing this. But anyway, um, this one would have to be a lot longer because... because um, because you're going to the n equals 4 to the n equals 2 instead of the n equals 2. The n equals 2 are overlapping really close, a lot easier and closer. But the n equals 4 stretches it out more. That's, I probably should have drawn it like that. I, I should have, oh well. It's probably better for me to, to do it this way. n equals 2 of carbon and n equals 2 of oxygen. Or n equals 2 of carbon with n equals 1 two, three, four of selenium. So now you can see better that that's going to be the longer. Well, okay, the the orbitals are what overlap the electrons. They're shared here. But from center to center, this is a lot longer bond than that one is. Okay, so that's a longer one. That one is shorter. So that one would have a... Um, that would be, oh, and I meant to say this also, I left off, oh, how can I leave it off? Longer and shorter. So that the long bond is the single, shorter is the triple. Higher bond order is shorter. Um, long, long bond order, one, two, three. Um, a, a longer bond order is, uh, is this is weaker. So what we want to tell you is weaker. Longer is, is going to be weaker. One bond order is weaker than a triple bond, obviously stronger. So, so triple bond is shorter and stronger. A, long, a, one, a single bond is longer and weaker. And, then, and anywhere in between, if it's 1, 1.5, 1 1.3, 2, 2.5, whatever you get for the numbers. So think about that as far as bond order goes. Bond order as a number gets greater, stronger bond, okay? And as a number gets greater, a shorter bond. Now, this is a different thing here. I'm not going to ask you the bond order. They'll, they'll both be bond order one because they're both single. But this one, because the, um, 
because it's the n equals 2 valence with a selenium of n equals 4, and that one's uh, n equals 2 and n equals 2 of oxygen and carbon, that, that's going to be a longer bond because, it, because of the, the extra shells you have. Okay, so I wanted to just throw that little bit on there. And if you were to ask a question, it would be good to draw, as I did, the shells to show that. It was kind of, when I had them spread out, that was not a good thing. Sometimes, like I say, I, I, I start drawing it on paper or on the chalkboard, and I think, wait a minute, that doesn't explain it good. And so, hey, you, you learn from my own little bad error drawing a picture, and I realized, no, that wouldn't be right. Okay, now for bond energy. Here we go. So bond energy is in section 8, 6. Well, you know what? We don't really have to look at 8, 6 too much. Um, it's technically average. It's called average bond energy. Well, I will say a little something about 6 for a moment. Okay, energy means thermo. What? Oh, no, I thought we escaped. You never will escape thermo, okay? We have it. It's going to be in every chapter for the, till the end, okay? Um, bond energy and enthalpy. Oh, no, that word, delta H. Oh, no. Yes, 8, 6, and 8, 7. Really, it's 8, 7, but in 8, 6, it talks about this. Here's a methane molecule. And all it is saying here is calculate the bond energy. Oh, okay. It says here that the delta H, if I take a carbon and join four H's onto it to make CH4, um, 1652. Oh, that's the heat of formation. Uh, yeah, it takes about 16... 42 kilojoules per mole to break apart all four of those in a methane molecule. So 1642. Well, all, all you would do is this. I just want to mention this because this could be a, even in a multiple choice at some point. 1642 to break four bonds on methane. Okay, that's a mole per mole, but we'll just for one minute. Okay, if I took 1642 and I divide by four, you get, if I divide by four, you get 410. Now, here's the weird thing, though. Um, oh, and I've actually got it on the next paper. I didn't know this. This is in 8.7 as well. Well, it turns out that that's not really, it's not that easy. Like break one, break one, break one. They're not all the same. It's kind of like, um, well, it's weird in a way, isn't it? Let me see. Breaking that down. It, it's, just, it's, it's, not, it's inconsistent. Like, if you break off the first H, CH3, if you take CH4, you break off one H, you turn it into CH3 and H, it's 435. But then CH3, break off one more to CH2, break an H off, it's for more energy. It's kind of like the atom. You take off one electron, then it gets smaller. It's harder to break the next one off, okay, 450. But then the next one gets a little bit easier, then it gets easier. So anyway, every time you take off an, uh, an, um, an H from carbon, it's different to take off the other H's, as you see here. But we have what's called the average bond energy is going to be 6, well, 1652 is the total. The average bond energy would be 413. You divide 1652. So I had 1642. Did I write it down wrong? Oh, yeah, I did. I wrote it down wrong anyway. So it's 413. Okay. The other the other section too. 1652. Okay. Well, anyway, you just need to know that bond energy, we're going to tell you what's the bond energy of a carbon to H bond or of a carbon to carbon bond or of a carbon to carbon double bond. We're going to give you all these values. You should just know that those are all average values. Okay. That's just good to know that. Uh, I don't I don't think it's going to really pop up very much at all. Okay, so now here's the big thing. Here's what you really want to know. Um, enthalpy. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump over to... You know, I said 8687. It's actually 88 that we're in right now. Did I write 88 on there? I didn't even write 88. Okay. Bond energy and enthalpy. Okay. 
I talked about this earlier. I've mentioned before. And look, I have a little magnetic. These little ball bearings are magnetic. If I want to break a bond, I have to add energy to it, right? So if I if I break a bond, that's endothermic. So to break every every time I want to know if that's a carbon and hydrogen, I want to break them apart, I've got to add energy. And endothermic, positive, whatever, 300 kilojoules or whatever it's going to be to break off a mole. All right? But when they come together, look, energy is released. So when they come together, energy is released. And they form a bond, they give off heat. It's a weird thing. You break a bond, endothermic, they form exothermic. Okay. Now, of course, if you have many atoms all joined together, you know, this breaks, this breaks, and all that, uh, reactions can be endothermic or exothermic. But anyway, um, okay, here we go. So what you're going to be doing, if you can think back to your thermo chapter, and one day I'll review this before the AP exam as well, there's many ways to find delta H. You can use calorimeter. You can do it with a calorimeter. You can do it with using all the values. You look up for the, the H of formation. Remember, the delta H of a reaction is, um, is equal to the, in fact, I'm going to mention that in a minute. The delta H of all the the um all the um delta H of the products minus the reactants. You might remember that delta H of products minus the reactants. Well, in bond energy, the equation is different. And I've got I'll do letter A to start off for you. And it says here's a reaction: H two plus F two gives you two HF. Sorry. And they want you to find out what is delta H based on bond energy. Now, what they're going to do is we're going to give you a list of bond energies. And in fact, there they are right there. But, you know, this might not be, um, might not be the easiest looking one. Oh, I didn't print this out on the worksheet. If you download, if you want to pause it and download the worksheet, that would be a good idea. But anyway, but what you're going to see on the worksheet is this. You're going to see all this list of what is the energy for an H to H bond, or here's, it, this is even better, or a carbon to carbon single bond, or a carbon to carbon double bond, or a carbon to oxygen bond, or a carbon to oxygen double bond, or how about a carbon to oxygen triple bond? So all of these have different values, and when you're doing this problem, you're going to see all these numbers here, kilojoules per mole. To break that bond, that bond, that bond. And these are always averages. I would imagine all the averages of all the carbon to carbon single bonds I can find in any, any substances. So um, you have to find the right one. That, so that's the thing about thermo. Make sure if I'm going to find um, the bond energy for carbon to carbon, I, if it's a single bond, I use this number. If it's a double, I use this. If it's a triple bond, I use some other number. Okay? Or C to O single or double or triple. So you got to be careful to use the correct number. So that's one thing. The other thing about bond energy is this. If you ever have to calculate the, the H of reaction, and it could have a little degree up there as well. This one, it, it didn't for this one, meaning there's something wasn't standard, I guess. But um, if, if you ever have to calculate the H for a reaction, always for bond energy... I would tell you, you need to draw the Lewis dot diagrams, or at least for yourself. Now, sometimes in the AP, they'll ask you, hey, draw the Lewis dot for this and this. They probably won't ask you that. They could ask you for that one. These are easy. But um, but they but they might ask you on step one, draw this Lewis dot, draw this Lewis dot. Now, calculate the bond energy. Okay, then you got it in front of you. But if they don't ask you, or if it's a multiple choice like this, you should know H to H is a single bond. Hopefully, you know that. Fluorine is also a single bond. Now, because I'm just drawing it for myself, it doesn't really matter. I'm just sketching it out. But I will remember, officially, you have to show all the lone pair. Single bond, single bond, and now make 2HF. And that's going to also be a single bond with a lone pair there. So, <coughs> here is the equation for bond energy. See if you notice this. Um, delta H of a reaction will equal... The um, sum of the bond energy of the reactants minus the sum of the bond energy 
of the products. I did not write it wrong. I did not write it backwards. Isn't that strange? It's actually different. To some of the bond energy of the reactants minus to some of the bond energy of the products. Um, it's the opposite of the other ones. All the other ones, delta G, delta H, delta S, they're, when they're based on formations, it's always delta H is equal to the delta H formations of the products minus some of delta H formations of the reactants. Or delta G products minus some of the reactants, some of the entropies of the products minus reactants. Remember that. Okay. But for bond energy, it is backwards. It's reactant minus product. Um, I won't go in and show you, explain so much why, but I will tell you this. In general, here's a general easy way to think about it. When we were doing before, we're putting in, we put in the heat of formation. Remember, formations, remember formations are like this, okay? But bond energies are like this, okay? So bond energies are all going to be endothermic. So that's one bit of good news. These are all going to be positive values. All the values will always be positive. I mean, for all the bond energies. This, this is a positive number. That's a positive. That's a positive. When you look up the bond energy of each one. But now, um, we talked about before. Um, well, anyway, that, that's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to say that a little bit about it as to why that is that, this way. Now, the other thing is important. They do not give you this equation on the AP formula sheet. So you just have to memorize and know this, all right? And this is how they usually write it themselves, actually. But then there's even more. You need to customize the equation to match your own problem. So delta H of reaction equals, so the bond energy of the H2, and I like to do it that, that way sometimes, all right, plus the bond energy. I'm really doing, a, a, I'm doing one that's very simple here. I'm going to have to do another one that's harder in a minute. F to F, all right, so that will be your reactants minus the bond energy of H to F. Oh, well, this is actually not too bad of a problem. Now, I want you to also notice something else. Just like um, I told you before, put a little N there, a little N there, the same thing is true here. There's only one H2, okay, no big deal. I don't need to put a one right there. Only one F2, but you're going to make two HFs. So you do need to have a two right there. And there's a and even it can be even crazier sometimes too. So let me let me just get into this first and show you this answer. So the H to H bond according to the notes, I mean the problem here for letter A, H to H is 432 kilojoules per mole. Plus, all right, F2 is 154 kilojoules per mole minus, now don't forget the 2 and the bond energy of H to H to H, H to F, I'm sorry, it's 565 kilojoules per mole. All right, now what I'll do is I'll just take 432 plus 154, 586. Okay, minus 565 times 2 is 1130 equals, does it fit down there? Yeah, you'll just make it negative 544 kilojoules per mole is the delta H of that reaction. So negative 544 kilojoules per mole. Or I'll just put kilojoules there per, you can say per mole, mole of reaction is what that means. So as the reaction is written this way, it's that many kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's all. Isn't that pretty easy? Now, um, that's not too bad for me to say there's not hardly any math in this chapter, and that's pretty much it. But now there is one little thing. They can also kind of do this problem backwards. In other words, they can give you the delta H and ask you to find the bond energy for one of these other substances. And I was thinking I ought to do one that's a little bit more difficult. Oh, I know a great one to do. Yeah, I know a very good one to do. I'll do, on your homework, oh, I didn't even write it down. 
you should really do ev you really ought to do everything honestly but on you on um you could skip the one on acetic acid yeah you could skip acetic acid and i don't know if if you really don't like if you think if you find it to be cumbersome 2c above it vinegar and the one above it i mean the one above it is important but if you think think it's kind of cumbersome if you want to just, just kind of wait not do it you could and wait and but then study it when you see the answer key i don't want to give you an overload of too much work but um but it but all of these could be important it could be given but let me do this this is a good one um i'm going to do water h2o so let's just say we have um h2o now let me find out what the what that is. I usually don't keep my computer on when I'm doing my lesson because I'm afraid that the fan's going to suck in some chalk dust. Um, ah, I didn't type it in right. Okay, water, it's negative 280 wait a minute oh ah goodness that's why I should never rely on the internet for any numbers like that oh great why can't I get a simple value of that you guys I'm so sorry why do they write it that way Let me, let me find another website. Ha! Kilojoule per kilomole. That's very goofy. I, I can't believe this. I wish I could pause this right now. I'm trying to make up a problem, and here I go. You can zip past this until you see me writing if you want to. Okay, negative 285.8. Negative 285.8. Wow. Took that long. Let's just make it 286. Negative 286 kilojoule per mole. Okay, there's delta H for this. And let's just say I give you that for um for what for H for H2. What, what was it we had a moment ago? For H to H. Oh, I've got it. Actually, this is on your homework worksheet. I'll, I'll look on that one. That'd be better. It might be the, it'll be the same. 432. Yeah, so H to H is 432 bond energy. H to, no, O to O. Oh, yeah, and they'll do this. O to O single and O to O double. An O to O single bond is um, not given on the paper. Well, O to O double is 495. And an O to O single bond, I don't know it. Good gracious. And then they have, um, okay, so... What you want to do, normally they'll give you that number. I'll make it some number like, you know, 300 or something, whatever. I'll put 300. So they'll give you that and, and you don't need it. So usually they give you a chart and they'll say, find the bond energy. Find the H to O bond energy. The average bond energy of H to O. And they'll give you this and they'll give you these. So what do you do? First step, make sure you draw the um, the the uh, Lewis dot diagram. So H, I mean, if you want to make with Lewis dots, H to H, and there's two of them. Oxygen, it's a double bond, okay? And then for water, of course, you know that water, you, you, you should have all these memorized. I think I once told you, make sure you memorize everything in Hofbrinkel. Okay, okay, so you got those, those, those. Okay, so you got all the things written out. Now, when you make your formula, do it this way. Delta H of the reaction is equal to the bond energy of H to H plus the bond energy of O to O double. Actually, two times the bond energy of H to H plus one times the bond energy of O to O minus, now look at how I'm going to do this. This is crazy. You have two H2Os. So 2 times the bond energy of H to O 
but you have two H2O bonds in water. You have HO and HO. So it's got to be another two. So two times two times the bond energy of HO. So be very careful. Watch that. There's two H2Os and there's a two in front of that. So two, two times, you know, it's like four, two times two. If you want to, you can just say I've got two times two, four times the bond energy. That might be easier for to do it that way, but there's two and two. All right. So we'll put all the numbers in. So the reaction is negative 286. Two times H to H is 432. Um, well, I'll practify that a little bit. The bond energy for the double bond is 495. Minus 4 times B, E, H to O. Or it could be called O to H bond. I mean, it doesn't really matter how I mean it. Okay, so again, negative 286 equals, well, I can do that with 864 plus 495. I'm just taking a lot of steps. Minus 4BE H to O. I don't need that there. Sorry. Just being more careful than I need to, I guess. I'll put all these numbers down. 864 plus 495. Is 1359 minus 4 to o Now take 1359 from both sides. So 1359 minus 286. Well, no, negative 286 minus 1359 is negative 1645 equals 4 times the bond energy of. H to O or O to H. So divide them both by 4. And 1645 divided by 4 is 411 kilojoules per mole is the bond energy of the O to or the H to O bond. Now, I grabbed that number from the chart somewhere, and I thought I would. On the paper, on your actual paper, it says it's 467. So <laughs> we got the number wasn't exactly the same. I don't know how good that number is. But anyway, but that's how you do all of this. So if you're given the delta H, you plug that in, and then you, um, you do all your math, 2 times 432 plus this. Okay, as I showed you, if I didn't do any problem with my math, it, it looks like the actual value should be a little bit higher. But based on the data I have, that's what I have gotten. So all right. So you guys work on that and answer the question. All the questions, even the back questions, the little essay questions, it's kind of a summary before the test that you'll have. I'll see you guys later.